Hi, this is overview video for chapter 12, light. Chapter 12 covers different aspects of properties of light, ones that come from its wave property, as well as the more practical aspects of light used in something called geometric optics, reflection and refraction. Uh, these are how microscopes and telescopes are made as more detailed in sections 12.8 and 9. And we'll go through each of these sections very quickly. So section 12.1, um, as a physicist, this is the most uh, fascinating, interesting, and important part of chapter 12. So I give a brief, um, as conceptual as possible, overview and we will leave it there. It's difficult to get too far into electromagnetic waves without involving a lot of math. So what you see in this section is the best we can do without involving uh, differential calculus. The next three sections are on these wave properties of light. So section 12.2, production and properties of electromagnetic waves cover um, what these waves really look like, kind of, <laughs> oscillating electric and magnetic fields. And sections 12.3 and 12.4 gives you an overview of different kinds of electromagnetic wave that you might not have thought of as being related to visible light, but all these different kinds of electromagnetic waves from the um, gamma rays that you might have heard about if you are a fan of Hulk, <laughs> and radio and TV, and microwaves, which are used for cell phone, well, which, which is used for cell phone networks. All these are at the very fundamental core, same type of thing as visible light. This is something that can cover quite a bit of topics. So it's just split it into two sections. So 12.3 is overview. 12.4 is the long section. I would say, give it a skim through. Um, make sure you can do the homework. As long as you can do the homework, you'll be fine. Um, but it is a long section, so please don't get bogged down on it too much. Just to give it a quick skim through so that you will have seen uh, what different aspects of light, both visible and invisible, uh, looks like. So the rest of the chapter focuses on more practical aspects of light. Um, reflection is a property that everyone should be familiar with. If you have a mirror, you have some reflection. So that's what this section describes. Refraction is probably also something that's familiar to a lot of people. If you have seen a straw or a spoon in a glass of water, then you have seen the optical effect of refraction. And this section covers why that happens due to the changing speed of light in transparent medium and gives you some examples and tries to give you some intuitive understanding of it. I guess I'll just leave it at now this isn't actually how it happens, but it gives you a good conceptual basis how why changing speed might cause light to bend at the boundary. It's not um, so, um, lawnmower obviously isn't light, but the way the light actually bends is not too far from this picture. Section 12.7 isn't something we spend a lot of time in, but I included it because it's an explanation of something that you might have seen as a child, a prism that uh, creates uh, these rainbow colored things at your own home without the weather conditions. <laughs> um, and this person, which you can define it as a spreading of white light into its full spectrum of wavelengths. And it happens because speed of light in transparent medium, it actually depends on the wavelength of light. You can see here for water, so this is what causes the real rainbows in the sky. The index of refraction for violet light is a little bit higher than index of refraction for red light. So as the light bends through the water droplets, the violet light and the red light bends at different angles, and this spread gives you the um, rainbow colors. 
But once again, we don't spend a lot of time in this section, so give it a skim through and then please move on. For a lot of us, especially those of you who might be going into health profession, uh, maybe you want to be an optometrician or an ophthalmologist, then this is the really important section. This is how uh, lenses work. And I think I want to post a lecture video specifically on ray tracing, which by the way, you are not required to know for this class, but it's just, uh, to me, it's a fascinating aspect of how the lenses work, how it creates images. So I, I will upload a video on um, image formation by thin lens um, and how, um, and what this ray tracing represents. But I guess the truth is uh, to actually work with the lenses, it frankly involves a little more algebra than I'm comfortable with for this class. So, um, so I want to just leave it at this conceptual level that images form and that when the images form, these images, you can actually see it projected on a screen or this is the topic that makes me wish I could do labs with this class. <laughs> um, so if you are taking the lab course, you'll have a chance to see all this. But for the vast majority of you who are just taking lecture, I'll post another video on this uh, image formation that goes more into depth. And the image formation by mirrors is also very similar. It's not too different. Um, it uses law of reflection instead of refraction. The only thing is it gets kind of complicated due to all this folding of light rays. But at a conceptual level, this is very similar to how image formation by lenses work. In fact, there's a very analogous situation here. Here's the ray tracing that illustrates how analogous image formation by mirror is to image formation by lens. And finally, polarization is a surprisingly practical aspect of light. Um, this polarization of light is actually how your computer screen works. If you have a polarizing sunglass, wear it, look at your computer's LCD screen, try turning your head and you will see the intensity of light change. That's due to the polarized light that your liquid crystal display screen is uh, producing. Uh, by the way, some LCD screens like iPhones have done some treatment so that the intensity doesn't change. But anyways, so the polarization of light, it, um, deeply tied into the nature of light as electromagnetic wave. The direction of polarization is the direction of electric field in the light wave. And you can use this property to produce various effects. And this is showing how overlapping uh, polarizers, like the kind used in polarizing sunglass, can affect the intensity. So uh, we also won't spend too much time with this because it's hard to do a lot of stuff with the polarization without involving trick functions and whatnot. So uh, we'll just leave it here. But one last thing to mention before I leave, this polarization by reflection, this is why polarized sunglasses are practical. This is how you get polarized light in nature, just uh, naturally. When unpolarized light, which is almost all light in nature, like sunlight, when it reflects from a surface, it preferentially polarizes light that's polarized perpendicular to this plane. So when you look at the reflected light, that's partially polarized. So that polarized sunglass, it's polarized in a way to block this preferentially polarized direction. That's how polarized sunglass reduces glare. So sunglasses with a vertical axis would then block reflected light and unpolarized light from other sources. So that's it for chapter 12. Um, skim through the rest of this section if you want. But please, as usual, take a look at your homework. Your homework is the best indicator of what you are required to, to know. So chapter 12 in particular covers probably the double the content that I will ever test you on. So please look at the homework and make sure that you are okay with what's in your homework. So until next time, bye.